Welcome to uh, what's new and what's coming for SharePoint team sites. Just wanting to make sure that if you didn't come for this session, you certainly have time to get uh, to another session. We always want to make sure you're at the right session. Um, there's a lot of great sessions, and the nice thing about MGM Grand is you can go up and down pretty easily. But we're going to be talking all about what's current for SharePoint team sites, and then the more interesting stuff, what's coming for the SharePoint team sites. Um, but hopefully you're enjoying the show so far. I know that there was a great keynote from Jeff Teeper. You're going to see us show uh, maybe one or two of the same things, but in much uh, more depth but also to make sure that you're very current on what is a SharePoint team site, and especially what does it mean when it's group connected or shows up in other places like Microsoft Teams. But to ground us a little bit, just to start off, if you think about where does SharePoint uh, and how does it contribute into this broader scope of Microsoft 365, there's a lot that you can think in terms of SharePoint as a content service. And it's a content service for everybody at whatever stage you are in the life cycle of planning, in uh, launching a new product, or just managing your day-to-day -day business. On that far left side is where you might just be working with one to a few individuals, and all the way up leading to how am I gonna work with a team where you collaborate, which we think is where a lot of people spend a lot of time, and then moving that up all the way to then I'm ready to communicate out to the whole entire organization with a firm and crisp type message, final materials, and a plan. So if you think about that, managing that through the life cycle with a consistent experience of how you work with your files, how you share your files, the same permissions management applies, and of course the underpinning is you of course have that same level of security and compliance with the ability to apply your own governance, and you have the ability to extend. And if anybody stayed for the second half of the keynote, which is really uh, the keynote part two, which is VESA and team, talking all about how you can extend that doesn't mean you can't extend a team site. Working with lists, working with Power Apps and Flow, but then really getting into coding your own solutions, you can do that as well, and we certainly encourage it as a platform. So if we dive in just a little bit to ground where the role of SharePoint is, SharePoint provides pages, lists, libraries, the sites themselves, uh, and certainly is a place to build out your own custom applications or out-of-box applications. And if you're fortunate enough or have been bold enough, I should say, to already try out SharePoint Spaces. That's powered by SharePoint, giving you nice, rich 2D and now 3D experiences with and without a headset. So there's a lot of things that SharePoint powers and how it plays into a pivotal role on top of AI-driven experiences, giving you the ability to do search today and like Naomi showed, which is the stuff we're working on for Microsoft Search in the future. It all plays into how you can get your work done as an individual, get your work done when you collaborate, and when you get time to share it across the organization, that it's very easy to access, easy to consume, and certainly easy to change things that you need to all along the way. So if you look at the role of the SharePoint team site, and these have been around for quite some time, we still in the service support the ability to create a classic site. If you have a classic site, certainly you can modernize it, we call that Groupify, which means you add a new modern Office 365 group to it. That's a lot of what we're going to be showing you today. And then when you want to be able to then collect all those sites together, you can make them a collection of sites as a part of a hub site. And we would call that Hubify. So Groupify, Hubify, and one of the things that I'll show you and spend a little bit more time on is what happens when you bring a SharePoint team site together with Microsoft Teams. It's not an or, it's an and. But we want these to be able to create in seconds, so these sh shouldn't be anything that you wait for. If you have create site turned on, you shouldn't have to wait for it. Create them in seconds. You should be able to start very easily with using a document library, working with news and publishing news across your team, creating a list, maybe even adding a flow to your list. Um, but certainly leverage a lot of the out-of-box experiences, and because it's group connected, it also means that that SharePoint site now sits alongside a connected planner plan and a shared inbox or a shared calendar. And there's a lots of other applications that come together, some of which actually borrow the content store of SharePoint. When you put your files in Microsoft Teams, guess what? That's actually being stored in SharePoint, the connected document library. Um, in that final mile of joining a hub, we want to make that easy to join a hub, and we want to make it really easy to unjoin and join another hub and if you don't want to be a part of a hub, that's okay. You can be your own team site 
and be just as happy. <clears throat> so we want to talk a little bit about the role of teams and team sites together. Um, and we want to just jump in and show you what that looks like. So you get a sense not only is, uh, you know, what SharePoint team site looks like today, but what does it look like uh, when it's actually experienced through teams. So the first thing I want to be real clear on is when you go to create a site, there is certainly a motion to create a site uh, using the team site template. And obviously there's another choice. You saw us talk about the SharePoint home site or things like that using communication sites. That's the other site type that we often talk about. But for this talk, we're always talking about team sites. So if we wanted to go in here and start to give it a name, you'll see that we've actually simplified a little bit of the experience. So I'm just going to start to give it a simple name. SPC 19 is a go. And we'll see if that address is available to me. It is, which is now starting to indicate I'm not just creating a site, I'm creating an Office 365 group. And I'm going to get this alias, SPC is a go. That's my site name. And true or false, you can just yell it out. If I don't like this name, can I rename it in the future very easily? <laughs> yes! Site rename. OK. So I can set whether it's private or public, and you, you, you get the sense of I'm creating a group. When I click Next and add the members that I want, I'm going to add Diego, and I'm going to add Patty. And when we say we want you to be able to create these fast, and even when we're timing out how long our demos take, when I click Finish, What's getting created right now is that object in Azure AD, the team site's already created, and all of the connected applications are also getting provisioned. So we're getting an instance of planner, uh, a plan and planner, an instance of a calendar and an inbox in Exchange, and on down the line. So now that's all available to me. This is a net new, very new uh, site, and I can even see that the group card starts to gather information about who's part of this site, <clears throat> what applications are connected to it, and I get a lot of that rich information. If I switch over to a site that's already in existence, and it's got a, a couple of pieces of news and a couple of uh, different assets that we've been using, we're on a modern page here. <clears throat> the technology that's made, uh, that's running this page, is the same across team sites and communication sites. So I can add whatever web parts I want, I can arrange them on the page however I want, and you get a sense that as you start to add things like news, add quick links in the upper right, and of course starting to have activity and adding documents. Those are some of the default experiences on the page. As I start to go into the document library, you'll see, similar to how you saw in the keynote when you start to work with document libraries, these are new modern document libraries uh, in addition to supporting modern document sets. And we have the rich formatting that comes through. Of course, you have the ability to create new content, go into quick edit even on a document library, and start a flow, and, and even if you wanted to create a power app. Last thing I want to show you here, <clears throat> and I'm sorry about my voice today, uh, is lists. Obviously, lists have been modernized, so that if you want to build out a lot of customization in how it looks, the different views, Niket is going to share a lot of new information around what we're doing with lists. But certainly, a list is, as you would expect, a very key element of SharePoint, and we've done a lot of work to bring that forward. But I'm only touching on what they look like here in SharePoint because I really want to transfer over to show you what it looks like in Teams. So this is Microsoft Teams that's connected to that same uh, team site. <clears throat> so this is sales and marketing team site. And now we're in the sales and marketing team and we're on the general channel. And as you can see in the general channel, there's been a number of conversations, people sharing documents, people publishing news, and even a news article that was published externally has automatically started a conversation here in Teams because we're using the SharePoint News Connector. But one of the things, <clears throat> and I'm going to take a quick sip, I apologize. <clears throat> one of the things that we've been working on uh, to deliver, and it's coming very soon in the month of June, is this new files experience in Microsoft Teams. So if you remember, I was on that document library on the SharePoint team site. This is what that document library looks inside of Teams. I'm going to expand it so you can see a little bit more. You can see the column formatting comes through. If I collect, uh, switch onto a document, you can see that the rich experience of what it is that I can do if I want to pin it to the top, I can pin it to the top of my library or that files channel. I can change my view. I can view it from tiles so I get a really pretty view of all of the different file types that we support to give beautiful previews. And I think one of the most important things that's consistent across OneDrive, SharePoint, and Teams 
is the ability to take my content with me. The content is only in one location, and we're giving you different user experiences to get to the content, and from a sync experience, I could bring that all down to my desktop, across multiple teams, across my OneDrive, and even from shared, drive, uh, shared libraries that people are inviting me into. So if I move back and show you a couple more things that are SharePoint oriented, I want to take a moment to show you how you can bring in content from SharePoint. So if we wanted to bring in a page or a list, we just use the SharePoint tile. And <clears throat> I'll pause here for a second. The new SharePoint logo is showing up even in the Teams backend, which is really exciting. Congratulations mm -hmm. to the team for the next milestone of, of the icons. But when it goes in here, you'll see, and I'll scroll down a little bit, it's querying out to that SharePoint team site what pages and lists are available to this group of people, these members of this team. One of the things I've already bookmarked, and I'm just going to highlight up here, is the dedicated all news page. And that's what's here. I'll show you that in a second. This is the home page, sales and marketing. But I'm just going to come through, and I'm going to pull through on the marketing launch page and add that as a page, as a tab in Microsoft Teams. I'm going to do it one more time so I can show you what it's like to bring in a list and the one that we were just looking at. If I click over to the pivot on lists, you should see product list. And I'll bring that in, clicking save. And you'll see that it brought in that list in its full fidelity. If I expand, I can go in here to quick edit. Won't take me out of the UI. I can make the changes that I want, save it down. Um, if I collapse back and I go into that marketing launch page, this is a full-fledged SharePoint page with an image and a couple of articles that have been linked to it. And the last thing that I wanted to show you in here was the DG2000, which is just another way to exemplify how you can bring content into Microsoft Teams to highlight it as something that you want to pivot to to showcase to the rest of your team. So this is a, a PowerPoint that's uh, stored in that <clears throat> document library that's part of the connected team site exposed as an individual tab. So this is just a PowerPoint file as a tab in Teams, but managed in the way exactly that you would expect. I can do anything that I want from a PowerPoint online perspective here. If I want to share from here, if I want to um, make changes, obviously, if I want to co-author with somebody, I can do that all through here. And since I highlight it as a tab in Teams, I can start a conversation right side by side and bring people into the conversation. So last thing I want to show you in Microsoft Teams is no matter what you do, whether it's with a SharePoint list, a page, a news article, a whole portal, or even something like this, which is uh, a PowerPoint, is I can start a conversation with our friend Diego and ask him a question. How do you like slide number three with very poor typing? <laughs> So hopefully that's really quick. We didn't want to spend a lot of time on the now because we're going to switch over to the next. But wanted to give you a quick summary, uh, getting back into the PowerPoint presentation, that if you've not used Teams before, we highly encourage you. And don't be confused. Microsoft Teams with a capital T absolutely loves team sites with a lowercase t. They do work better together and they provide a wonderful experience. SharePoint doesn't offer conversations. Microsoft Teams doesn't offer content services. So better together when you're working and collaborating together. So to the future. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My fault. Yep. My fault. So to ground that experience, um, we want to be real crisp on how both SharePoint and uh, uh, Microsoft Teams comes together, but on top of that, we also get some questions around what's the role of OneDrive? So <clears throat> we tried to put together a set of slides uh, that would be helpful, and I'll tell you at the end, it kind of culminates all together. So if you see the role of SharePoint, SharePoint is that content service that's servicing both OneDrive and Teams. You saw what I did in Teams, but just to reemphasize, if you don't know, OneDrive is built on top of SharePoint. But it really is that content service that's given you all the abilities for search and discovery, a lot of that AI-powered experience of how you find content, or better yet, how content finds you. And of course, all the access controls, all the security uh, elements that you want to add to that. And the story goes on. Certainly, SharePoint has played in that space for a very long time. And there's no difference when you do something in OneDrive or Teams, because effectively, all that content is stored in SharePoint. 
If you flip the coin and just try to understand, well then, what is the role of OneDrive? <clears throat> OneDrive is a place where you can access all files, no matter where they're stored. If they're in your individual productivity space, your OneDrive, then you'll be able to access them through OneDrive, of course. But when we start working with shared libraries across different teams, different groups, different working environments, you'll be able to collectively see all of that in the same user interface. That's OneDrive. And the one thing that OneDrive adds as the value on top of that is this consistent files experience. Great previewers, great way of sharing, great way <clears throat> of working with your files when you co-author together. And a lot of what Jeff talked about in the keynote, <clears throat> none of that is possible if you don't store it in SharePoint or access it through one of our access points, being that rich, uh, uh, rich way of working with content, especially when things like the Fluid Framework ship. It's very much dependent on it being stored in the right location, um, but certainly accessible consistently. <clears throat> and finally, that role of teams is the hub for teamwork. It really aggregates Certainly when you look at the lens through files, but when you get beyond files, planner plans, or third-party things like Trello tasks, or other third-party uh, apps that they connect to, they aggregate all that, and that's where people really will collaborate. In Teams, you get both uh, intelligent file services and the intelligent content services, really the better of OneDrive and SharePoint coming into Teams. And if you didn't know it, in Teams, you can actually go <clears throat> and access your full OneDrive uh, experience. That experience is gonna get up-leveled, so if you go through Teams and get to your OneDrive files, you'll have that rich new files experience. Um, final click here, as you think about working either as an individual with your files, working with your team in Teams, or working across the organization, you should know that all of these user interfaces accrue the value of a consistent file experience, and a consistent and intelligent content services layer. So with that, we transfer to the future, and uh, we'll leave you this with just the last thought as we get uh, Niket ready here. Let's go. Let's uh, yeah. So we go to one for Niket. Thanks, Mark. I am super excited to announce and tell you about the latest features which are coming for SharePoint team side. So just to start with on home pages, new files experience in Teams and OneDrive. Like Mark just now showcased, the consistent file browsing experience across the canvases, which is precisely OneDrive, your SharePoint, and Teams remains coherent. And that's what the idea is. The second one, just to brief you about, which is a hub join approval. This is a new feature which we are introducing in SharePoint wherein there are two entities, which is precisely a requester and a hub owner, where a requester sends a request to the hub owner precisely to join the hub. Depending upon whether he declines or accepts, the communication needs to send out to the requester. And that's where the flow comes in picture. This, this out-of-the-box flow exactly does the same, wherein it makes sure that it connects both the requester as well as the observer consistently. Third one, which is there, the first run tips and tricks help for team site owners is exactly wherever you create a team site, there are certain high value actions which we understand and we believe are very, very important for any of the creator as well as the team site owner. So some of the actions could be adding more members to the team. Some could be doclib addition, document library addition. The other could be adding a list or uploading a file item. These high value actions let the creator as well as the owner of the team sites make the most out of them. The fourth one, which is site navigation reorder via drag and drop. Site navigation reorder has existed through ages, but has been in an archaic way wherein you had to click multiple times just to reorder certain items. What we are bringing forth right now is kind of basic, but very necessary wherein you can drag and drop links right across and pick them up and put, up, put, up, put them to a place. These were certain features which are going to be available soon, maybe in a quarter or two, the one that I'll be talking now will be available later this year. So the first one over there is kind of self-explanatory wherein extract a site to a site design, including list, branding, and navigation using PowerShell. What we are doing over here is we are creating a site, and we are creating a site design out of it, combining the power of list, branding, navigation, and other things via PowerShell. The second last one, which is Office Enterprise Document Templates. 
this is a very interesting concept wherein we have a special kind of site which has special kind of libraries which contains organization assets. What do I mean by organization assets are certain things which the organization wants the communication remains consistent through inside the organization and outside. Some examples could be the logos which it wants consistently. Other things could be the office files, what templates does an organization refer to. So whenever an employee in an organization will be working with any of the office applications, it will point to a document library and pick up the relevant templates available over there. I'll showcase a demo for it in a while. And the last one that I want to talk over there for home pages would be planner cards and site activity. This is exactly tasks which are assigned to me due recently in my team site, in my team site activity. I'll showcase a demo to it, and I think that would make it more clearer. So, so I've logged into Patty right now. And what I'm doing is I've created a website which is under Contoso Electronics and with the name of Contoso Product 2.0. Let me do one thing. I've got a colleague with the name of Alex, and I'm assigning a task to Alex. What I'll do over there is I'll click on New, add a plan over there. What it asks me is either I can use, I can create a new plan or I can use an existing one. So let me use an existing one since I have one. And I have one plan name, which is Product Launch. Other thing to notice over there is asking me to have a show in site navigation. So I'll allow that to be. And I see a product launch on the site navigation has come by. Now let me say, I need sales report. I need sales report submission. Let's say it's due tomorrow. And let me assign it to Alex. So what's happening in the background is this task is assigned to Alex, which is due tomorrow, and the task says that a report, sales report submission is due to him. Let's do one thing. Let's go to Alex's team site, where a mail has already triggered, if you notice, which is reminding him there's a sales report due. Let me refresh the page. And you notice, on my team site, under my activity, I'm getting a notification there's a task item due in my name which warrants some action. What I can do over here is I can quickly go in without changing, changing context, being in the same canvas. I can open Planner over here, do a tick, and it's done. It's as simple as that. So this is one of the features that we are launching right now. This this, to set a little context, too, in the site activity feed, we're starting to introduce more than what's happening in the site. Previous to this, we uh, introduced what happens when somebody sends an email to the group. You would get that group email activity with the planner activity True. and more to come in that space. Yep. So I also talked about organization templates for documents, right? So what it entire means is organization assets is a special kind of website wherein I have certain document libraries already attached to it. So if you notice, I've got one for photography. What it contains is certain images which the organization want all the employees to consistently use in various kinds of communication that they will have. Something like logos, anywhere anyone is using any kind of organization logo, it should have consistent behavior, and that's a common library what the organization will have. Something on the enterprise templates, if you notice, I've got certain templates for my office files. The one that I have it over here are PowerPoint, are PowerPoint and Word. Let me show what it means. So Patty does one thing. She goes and opens PowerPoint. And right away, I've got certain suggestions. And Patty sees that, OK, Contoso branding, product overview, showcase stories, status update, and tutorial. These are certain templates which PowerPoint is pulling from somewhere. And that's where exactly it's pulling from. There's an organization assets site which it's <coughs> directing to. And it's directing to an enterprise library over there. So. Let me do one thing. Let me open one of the templates, which is product <coughs> overview. One thing to notice over here is I don't have any edit permissions in this. So the reason for that is for the consistency of the template. She should not be able to edit the template because it will be used by other people in the organization. What she's supposed to do over here now is she's, a, she's supposed to save a copy of the template. It will suggest me the places where I can save the file, wherein my personal library or in the, any of the shared libraries. 
Since I'm working in my website, which is Contoso Product 2.0, let me just save it over there. And I just click Save. Now in the same page, with the name, I get to see the same template that I did not have edit tries previously, but I have it now. For the sake of simplicity, I can just rename it to Product Overview 2.0. Oh. So yes, so this is the organization asset template. I think I'll switch to the other yeah. one. Yep. And if you saw on there, there were, of course, multiple types of enterprise uh, templates that were loaded. As you go through office.com and click into Word Online or PowerPoint Online, that's where you would see the templates start to appear. And as you click into them, of course, you're accessing the template, but generally, by default, a net new document. So when you save it or start working with it, you're not overriding the template, but you certainly are creating the content already in the cloud, already in the right place from where you started that. Right. So coming to SharePoint list and libraries, uh, so modern lists and libraries, a user does not have to start from scratch. He has multiple ways to start creating a list. One of the ways, which I think was demoed over there in the keynote as well, is list from an existing list. What it allows over there is a user, wherever on a shared library he'll have access to, he can create a list out of that. What happens over there is he can only copy the schema and the formatting applied on the list, but not the content for now. The second way to do it, which is the most loved tool among all the people to manage tasks, is Excel. A lot of people manage a lot of tasks over there in Excel, and they want to keep the data over there. But just in case you want to switch to SharePoint and want to create a list over there, it's much more easier now. Other thing that we are improving right now is improve quick edit. So quick edit has been a functionality which we've been using to edit lists from time and long. And as we are modernizing lists, we are improving certain things, which is exactly the perf. After the initial load, the switch to quick edit would be as quicker, or maybe better, to switch to a tile view. The second thing that happens over there is the filter columns remains persistent. On a details view, if you have filtered certain items and you switch to a quick edit view, you still see the filtered items. Formatting, one of the most loved feature over there for the last year, remains persistent across for quick edit. If you have applied certain formatting in the details view and you're going to formatting and changing certain values, formatting automatically adjusts accordingly. Preserve sort filter in the main view. You have sorted certain items, and you're going and switching between quick edit and the details view. That still remains persevering. Let me quickly show what do I mean by all these things. On Contoso 2.0, I've got a list with the name of inventory, where I already have some data inside. Just for the primer, there are certain columns. I've got a column formatting on corporate discount and certain number columns. Let me start with one thing. Let me start with trying to create a list from an existing list. Impossible. Let's see. <laughs> so I go to site contents, go to new over there, and click on list. Now if you notice on this, I get three options. One is uh, from the scratch, I need not do anything. I don't have any schema at this point of time. I still can create a list which has existed all throughout from an Excel. What I get to know over here is from an existing Excel sheet, which it's reflecting over there in my recent files, it identifies the tables which are existing in an Excel, suggests me a layout and a schema, and allows me to edit the right kind of format type for the columns. I think similar thing that happened over there in the Jeff's keynote, if you would have noticed over there. So this is exactly the example for that. The third option, the one that I'm talking about, which is from an existing list. So from an existing list, it suggests me the shared libraries that I have. And OK, let me just refresh this. I think it's not showing right now. Let me just quickly start over again. OK. So let me copy one of the lists from Global Sales. So Global Sales is one of the shared libraries which has been shared to me, and it allows me and suggests already existing lists where I have access to. Let me do one thing. Let me enter the name, which is, let's say, product list 2.0. And I select this list. What it will do 
at this point of time, it will copy the schema from the product list and will recreate right in front of me. If you notice, the schema is borrowed from my sales website where I borrowed the list from. So just to really make that clear, what may be really challenging in the past too is that was a list from a separate site collection, using it as basically a draft for a new list in the site collection that he was working on. So you could do it from within the same site collection or across site collections and borrow lists to save your time. So I talked about quick edit. Let me just quickly show you what is the power of it and what things are happening. So if I enter quick edit, which is a very quick swift move into the quick edit mode, let me copy certain items and try to paste over here. Boom. So if you notice what happens, it borrows the formatting which was already applied over there on the previous list and right away renders and adjusts to the data that I've pasted in quick edit. As simple as that. Nice. I've got a list with inventory 3.0, which is exactly similar looking to my list, which was inventory with formatting, which I've borrowed on a different kind of content. That's the power of quick edit. I think I'll, mm -hmm. yeah. That's the one. Okay. So coming to SharePoint lists and libraries, one of the things which is column and view formatting. In December last year, 2018, is when we introduced a no code way to format certain column types. Certain column types were choice, date and time, and Boolean. Containing the same, I'm very happy to announce we are containing the same trend and announcing it for number columns, which is data bars for number columns. The one in development right now would be rule builder UI for view and column formats. So if you remember what used to happen earlier, we do not used to allow people and users to define any of the conditions. You had some definite background styles. You had no way to define a condition where you want to put a formatting. Via the rule builder, you precisely can define where you want to put the condition and where you want to format. Alternate rows via view style UI. So alternate rows is the shaded rows, which will be the first template we'll be announcing for view, uh, view formatting. By this, what you can do is that you can have shaded rows alternatively in a list. I have demos lined up for everything, but let me just recap once. Rich text formatting UI. Again, all the templates that we launched till December, we did not have a way that we can do anything apart in styling from background color. What now we can do over there is you can define much more richer experience in comparison to just background color. You can do a bold, you can do a font size, you can change the bold italics, you can define a border color over there, you can put some icons over there, you can define an alignment. I'll, I'll get to it. Third last over there is the tile based view support in JSON. I think this has been one of the keynote features which got the most claps last year, wherein we used to format one of the row items as one card. What we're introducing now over there is you can define the height and width of a card, which precisely becomes multiple cards in a list view. With some custom metadata and action buttons over it, it becomes super powerful. Lightweight form customizations. We have a very enriching way to customize forms for row edit experiences, which is in Power Apps, which is superb. But there are some common actions which we still want to happen right over there in SharePoint Canvas itself. Rather than users having to switch to Power Apps, going over there and doing it, we want users to have the same experience like for reorder any of the columns or editing or hiding of any of the columns. If your users would be able to do that right away in SharePoint Canvas going forward. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, cool feature. Go for it. <laughs> and I, I will say, when you see the demo of a lot of what he's describing, it really will land home all of what you can do as a user. You'll feel like a power user without having to take the power class. And the last one over there is Power App Forms for document libraries. Power App Forms have existed over there in list for time and long. What we're introducing now over there is for document libraries. The same customizations, the same edit functionalities, adding metadata that you can do over there in library list you would be able to do the similar functionality in libraries as well. Let's head to the demo first of all. <laughs> so this is the list that we just created, which was Inventory 3.0. I had some borrowed formatting from the previous list. I've got a column over here, which is in stock <coughs> column. It's a number type of column, right? Has got some negative values, some positive values. Let me see what I have over here. I go to column settings and do format column. 
This is the designer that comes across me, and let me just tell you what it all is about. So if you notice, I've got a context switcher. It asks you a question that which place do you want to apply for matting onto? So right now it's in stock. I as well can apply on the entire row, which is exactly view formatting is all about. I can do it on any of the columns while just entering from any of the columns. So for the sake of simplicity, let me just choose in stock and choose data bars. You see, on the one-click experience, it already renders on the basis of data which is there in the column and gives neg negative positive data bars to the column. What extra I can do over here is I can define the minimum and the maximum value according to the choice of the user what bars he wants to set. He can define certain background colors. He might not want to have a blue color. He can give it, uh, let's say, a red. Red is already there. Green color. And on a red one, I can give an orange one, right? And it happens right over there. This will be available very soon. I think uh, it's already rolling out at this point of time. And maybe by the time conference ends, it should be there with the users. Other thing that's already going to be launched and will be ruling out, uh, rolling out would be view formatting, which is shaded rows, the one that I talked about. So if I click on this one, and just do a simple save. So this is what shaded rows is all about. On a mod 2 basis, I get to alternatively color rows. But it's not only about coloring, right? How about I get to go back inside, go into edit template, and instead of choosing just the colors, I can have a uh, rich text formatter right inside. I say, I want to bold the content. On a fill color, give me a yellow. On a text color, give me a red. Give me a cool border, which is black. And just save it. Boom. Woo! So this allows you to define the kind of style that you would want to put on a list. This becomes really intuitive, at least on the styling part. I, I just want to pause for a second. Yep, yep. That's actually my Christmas list. <laughs> That's not the inventory. True. <laughs> Especially the Surface Hub. Yeah. OK. So if you notice what we have done right now, I did not allow you guys again to define any of the conditions. I've been playing with styles. The conditions are auto-defined, where I said alternate rows. Nobody could define anything. That's where Rule Builder comes into picture. So let's say on the, all, on the whole row, I say, I'll go on conditional formatting. This will be one of the templates that will be available across, which is a view formatter or a column formatter. Let's just see what it is all about. I go inside, and I've got conditions to define. I can define conditions, basis which I'll put for matting on the rows. So let's choose one of the fields. Suppose I select one of the fields as store location. I choose an operator is equal to and put place as San Mateo. I go inside. I do a bold over there. Let me fill it up with the red. And save. So what happens over there is it has formatted the rows on the basis of location wherever San Mateo is there. So I ended up applying formatting on X column basis Y column, or on the whole rows. Isn't it super cool? <laughs> what it also allows you is not just to define one condition. We define two, two things over there. One is a rule, one is a condition. A rule is precisely a combination of style and condition. I can define multiple rules over here. Same, same way, I can choose certain other fields and define things. So it's an and and or operation where I get to define multiple rules, basis which it chooses certain things. So let's pick again on a store location. Let's do it. Now what happens over here is in this designer, I get to apply two conditions, wherein the condition one takes priority over the second condition. All these jigsaws can happen over there with three powers, which is RTF, which text formatter. One is the, which is the rule, uh, 
rule builder wherein you can define the conditions. Combining the power, I think column formatting, you can apply column formatting on even a single cell now. I think that's about it, right? Yeah. On this one. Woo! Oh, yeah. I could have forgot. There's, there's one, more, one more thing. One more thing. We forgot <laughs> our, our higher collars. One more thing. So, OK. So I talked about tile-based views, <clears throat> which I said that last time was a part of the keynote, wherein you can apply row formatting on one of the rows. This is one of the document libraries that I have with me. What we announced at that point of time, what this already existed, which is very simple tile view. Let me go to a list view. And this was the one that was demoed, as in one row as a list item for the, as a, sorry, one row as a card of size of a list. How about I do this thing, I define certain sizes and render like this. So each row becomes a card with certain metadata action items over there, which is via all JSON. So this gets, this gets released very, as an, I think end of the quarter is something that we're hoping this to release to JSON at least. And in plan is what is exactly a designer of the similar kind that I just showed you for column formatter. With the designer, you would be able to do multiple things wherein you can decide the kind of metadata that you want to see upon, kind of images you want to pivot upon, be it a people column or maybe an image column or an attachment column. All this comes both across, which is lists as well as libraries. Super cool, right? Woo. So yeah, I think. I'm all right, <laughs> so the question might be, what does it all look like from a roadmap perspective? You got a, kind of a teaser through all the different, uh, different assets, or different slides that we were walking through. But we want to give you a kind of a culminated view over everything that was announced, uh, both in terms of what's available soon and what's coming later this year in top of mind, and I'll let you walk the slide. Cool. Um, I think I more or less talked about all the things on available soon and later this year, kind of showed demos of a lot of things over there too. Just to talk about certain things which are top of mind, one is list performance. I think Jeff already has mentioned so many times we are char turbocharging lists at this moment. We want to get the data in faster, and we want to view data better. These are the two goals that we'll go forward with and work upon. Second item over there is column sets. It's an interesting concept. You can, you can draw a parallel to document sets which already exist in lists, wherein in a column I combine the power of a flow formatting and have you define a column type to define a type of list. Think of a task list just by adding a single column. The third over there is modernize alerts using flows. As we are modernizing lists at this point of time, flows and the alerts on flows should definitely not be left behind. And that's what we are aspiring for on the third one. List view web part as dynamic data consumer. What we think about this one is we let different web parts talk to each other. One becomes a data producer, the other one becomes a data consumer. I think this already would be getting demoed in another session right now, but cool. List from list includes custom power app forms and flows. So list and list, I showed you certain demos where you can start from a list or from an Excel, but how about I do another plus plus over there, beyond bo uh, borrowing formatting, I let you choose the power app forms that you have already custom defined in the previous list. Or as well, I let you borrow the flows which are also a part of the other list. All this combined will bring power to PowerPoint, or SharePoint. I think that's the road point, and I think I'll hand it over to Mark. Thank you. So we certainly want to take that power of how you build out the experience that you want to deliver to other people, or as you're working together, what you want your lists to work like, how they should work for you. And libraries, of course, will follow that same uh, uh, pattern in terms of how you want to design the experience. And everything that he just showed you from a list and library's perspective, when that lands into the service, you can guarantee that as you bring it into other experiences, whether it's in Microsoft Teams, the experience of files in Outlook or elsewhere, you will see that same rich formatting, the same capabilities to even go so far as to be able to do it in their user interfaces. So that's the power of how they're building lists and libraries to be more of a shared control across multiple entry points. Um, to land a little bit, we have a customer recently who's been using SharePoint plus Microsoft Teams to help bridge the gap between people who are out on the oil rig, and the oil rigs often move, and back at the headquarters, their biggest challenge from a list perspective was to actually maintain the list in terms of where the oil rigs were. Because they're so mobile around the different spots in the Gulf and other regions, 
they actually had a lot of uh, communication via telephone where people had to call in before they hopped on the boat. Where is the rig? Where do I need to go? Where is the boat meeting me? And so they started to maintain that in a list, which was then available through Microsoft Teams to communicate to out, out to people that were on the rig. And of course, the day-to-day -day operations of taking in and collaborating and working together, they saw a lot of value in bringing the power of the list inside of Teams in addition to all the other collaboration. So uh, we also wanted to make sure that you had your own action plan. Some of what you see, we hope when it's available, you'll just want to try it. But at the most basic level, we want you to feel comfortable about empowering people to be able to create a team site in a connected fashion, one that is giving them the tools they need for a content collaboration right alongside conversations, task management, and of course, a lot of other things that other apps bring with shared calendars and shared inbox. So we don't want you to turn this off. We want you to learn what are the right governance options that you have that we can help you put in place with the technology to then, of course, put that in place and let people get started. And then, of course, you can also uh, always monitor and audit what people are doing without them going somewhere else to collaborate uh, in a shadow IT fashion. We do hope that you see the value of moving from classic to modern. So groupify, teamify, hubify, and hopefully to your end users, you will joyify them. <laughs> But we, we have the tools in place where you can do this today. You can take a classic site and modernize it. And it brings all the value of everything we were showing you today and, of course, what's to come very soon. And certainly, if you haven't ever used a SharePoint list, don't be afraid to do it. Um, I, if you don't know, I've been on the SharePoint team for quite some time, but I'm not the, the most power user when it comes to the depths of uh, something as advanced as a uh, a SharePoint list and then uh, you know, developing on top of it. But certainly, creating a list is in a snap. You just name it, start adding your columns and tracking it, read a little bit, try something each day, and you can start to do column formatting, add power apps, add flow. There's a lot of things that you can do to not only learn lists, but get proficient enough to actually accomplish the task at hand. And once you know what to do, as our friends out in the world, and one sitting out here, Sue would tell you, what's your outcome? and then go build the list to do it. We're encouraging you to learn a little bit about lists before you know your outcomes, so that once you know your outcomes, you can build the list that you want. So we also want to encourage you to go above and beyond what you've done, which is attending our session. We thank you very much. But there are a lot of other great sessions that will go into a lot of depth across a lot of what we showed and some things, of course, that we didn't show. So there's uh, Getting Started 101 with Team Sites from start to finish. There's a lot of information on lists both for Microsoft and for Microsoft MVPs. <clears throat> and there will be some sessions, excuse me, that get into the heart of growing your content, things like record centers, things like document centers. Um, I'll have a session on Thursday that's all about teamwork governance, which is governing more than just SharePoint, not just Teams. It's all better together, and you should hope that you can govern it all. Um, but certainly there's a lot of notions around what is Teams, what, how do I get started with Power Apps, um, but a lot of great sessions throughout. <clears throat> and the last thing we want to note, it's maybe a little bit low on the slide as I'm seeing it here, but we will have an Ask Microsoft Anything at the end of the event that you can actually front load your questions if you want, and we'll make sure that somebody's there to answer that question based on your question. Um, but that will be Thursday at 4.45, uh, but definitely one not to miss. And if you've got a question that you want somebody from the lead, uh, the team the leaders from the engineering team, Front load that question and they'll get, they'll get it. Sure. Leave with, <clears throat> excuse me, a thank you note before my voice drops out and I apologize <laughs> for that. Um, lots of resources that are available to go learn more. We'll have the deck and the information from our session loaded where it needs to be for your session builder access. Uh, but thank you, Mark Cashman from the SharePoint team. Thank you, Nikit from SharePoint team. And if you have any questions, feel free to come on up. If not, hope you had a great first day. Two more days to go. Great SharePoint conference. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you.